Greetings, and welcome to Etzheim's weekly podcast, recorded live in Richardson, Texas. We invite you now to join us for one of our synagogue's Shabbat messages. I would like to, uh, before I pray, uh, greet all the people of God, brothers and sisters, uh, online, on YouTube Live, uh, including the man of God and my brother, David Schiller. Uh, we greet you, man of God. I, I know you're praying for me. <laughs> and I'd also like to greet my beautiful wife and children um, and honor her. She is a virtuous woman, a Proverbs 31 woman. I was very, very fortunate and blessed by God to have her given to me. And I want to honor her and thank her for all she does. She homeschools our six children, nine and under. And she trains them up in the way they should go. And she worships with them, prays with them, uh, and does an amazing job. And uh, I don't honor her enough. So I just want to honor you, sweetheart, and my children, if, if they're even logged on. Wendell, Abigail, Avriel, Pascal, Joel, Abel, I think I named all of them. <laughs> Pascal. Love you guys. Okay, everyone here, under the sound of my voice, I solicit your prayers, and I'm even going to pray now before I start. I believe God wants to uh, do a mighty work in our midst, and it will not be because of my uh, intelligence or preparation, articulation, or any of those things. It will only be simply because... His strength, his might is made perfect in my weakness. Amen. And uh, I have prepared, I do have some things down, but I, I, I sincerely want to see him glorified and pleased. I want to please him. And so if you could just join me in praying even now uh, that, that he would have his way with this, with this short time as I grab my phone so I can put my timer on. For this opportunity to look to you and not to man, that you would teach us, that your kingdom would come, your will would be done on earth, here, at Eschheim, within these four walls. Prepare us, prepare our hearts, not just for this moment, for, for when we depart from here. that we'd be doers of your word, that we'd respond to your written word, your commands, your statutes, your truth, your call, your standard, that we would hasten and run with boldness before the throne of grace, before the mercy seat, that we would receive this week and the next week, and the next week, deep into 2021, grace, help, strength, enablement, wisdom, to be able to not just overcome, not just conquer God, but to be more than conquerors in Yeshua. Abba, Father, I lift this petition before you in the hearing of my brothers and sisters and all those under the sound of my voice. Have your way. And it is in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. If you could turn to Matthew 25, we're going to start there. And uh, I actually have a little bit of slides. It's just the scriptures. Um, But if you have a Bible with you, I'd love for you to open it and turn to Matthew 25. Hallelujah. The so last time I was before some of you, maybe many of you, uh, it was Yom Kippur, and I was given the honor of proclaiming the same message that John, the immerser, proclaimed, repentance. Repentance unto salvation. 
And we spoke about the sincerity and the humility it took for these people when John the Immerser in the wilderness began to call them unto himself that they would then calling out and repenting and confessing their sins be immersed all because he knew and he had been shown that the Messiah was coming. And then he even began to point to Yeshua and say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I was able to testify how I beheld and and my sins were washed away. And I testified and shared how I was a very wretched, wicked, arrogant, prideful dirtbag. Bound in sin, bound in pride. And how God in his grace and his mercy snatched me out of that posture and that position through the preached word of God and melt, melted the ice off my heart, and pricked my heart with the gospel. But how it took humility and it took a season of counting up the cost. Well, I have a similar message today. A people prepared for his return. And we will be starting in Matthew 25. Everyone's there. A people prepared for his return. Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So as I said earlier, last time I was before you, I was focused on John the Immerser preparing the way for the Lord, preparing the way of the Lord, making crooked ways straight, calling the people, chosen people of Israel to repentance, to turn back to Abba Father with all of their hearts, minds, and strength in humility and sincerity, not in secret, not hidden, honoring that he was a prophet, honoring that his his immersion was from God, they literally would go before others, confessing their sins in front of more than likely family or friends or people in the community that knew them, acknowledging their need to repent, acknowledging that they had drifted from the commands of God, drifted 
from his heart. Possibly many of them, or at least some for certain, were still drawing near him with their mouths. But their hearts had grown far from him. But some were ready. Some were prepared. Some were willing to humble themselves. And here in this text, the same way when I spoke last on a cry, the cry of John for today. This is a, there's another cry in this text. There's another cry in this text. Verse 6, and at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. We're going to honor the context of this passage. We're going to go back into chapter 24. I don't have any slides for it. You'll need to read along. We're going to build back into that same parable shortly. But I want to just, before we go into chapter 24, I want to bring to your attention that there are some like those virgins, the foolish ones, that are sleeping or slumbering, but they are not resting prepared, possibly under the sound of my voice. And I just want to encourage you as we move forward, if you could please hear, hear my heart. I am not up here <laughs> as an expert, as a super holy, perfect man of God, but God has graced me and enabled me by his grace in Yeshua to grow over the years. And I've seen people become so consumed with impressing man and convincing men and women that they are wide awake to righteousness, that they miss it. And years later, months or years later, they, they are aware that they are slumbering. But at that point, they are not resting in the same way that the wise virgins were resting. Because as we take note, and we'll go back, I'm getting ahead of myself, but as we take note, the wise virgins were sleeping too. But they had oil. They were prepared. And so I want to encourage those because I, I know how I hear messages. This is not to, to cause anybody that is resting in Yeshua, that is truly abiding in Yeshua, that truly loves him and is honoring him and is working out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. This message is not to condemn you and cause you to doubt that you are his. Please, if you are resting in Yeshua and you truly know that he gave you a new heart and new spirit and that you were born again of the spirit and of the water, that you should not allow anyone to cause you to condemn yourself, beat up on yourself, point to the one area or three or four areas that you are still working out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling, and then to begin to doubt. That is not my goal. That is not my desire. But that we would, that we would acknowledge the enemy and how effective he is. Like I said, I've seen it over the years since 2001 at deceiving and having someone deceived that because they come to a building, because they come to a gathering, that everything is okay, even though they know they're drifting further and further away from his heart. Chapter 24 of Matthew. I just want to honor the context of Matthew 25, speak a little bit about the day of the Lord. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, verse 1, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua, excuse me, said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when all these things, tell us when all, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. And Yeshua answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. 
And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those, verse 16, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let whom, who, him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, or do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender, and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Speaking to that generation that experiences these things. Heaven and earth, verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day, Listen closely. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. This is Yeshua speaking to his disciples. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. 
When then, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Like the wise virgins. Whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hypocrites, hypocrisy, a mask, pretending to be something that they're not. Those that will hear, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Just like the foolish virgins that were rejected and not able to come into the bridegroom for the wedding. I never knew you. And so, to practically, practically flesh out what it is to be prepared. How do we prepare? The first thing that I must focus on is our hearts. You noticed earlier in the chapter, in the 24th chapter of Matthew, it spoke of something that will take place that concerns me greatly for our generation specifically. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. How's your heart? How's your heart doing? Any breaking of the laws been angering you lately? <laughs> Anything frustrating you, upsetting you? How's your heart? Is it consumed with a passion of fire for, for God? for your Abba's glory, for the glory of Yeshua? How's your heart? Or have you found yourself being offended lately? Perhaps by an election, maybe even finding out that there are some people that profess Yeshua as Lord, voting for someone that you can't believe they voted for. How's your heart? How are these things affecting you? Please understand me, I am not against righteous indignation. I love righteous indignation. It drives men of God to our knees to lead our homes in the fear of the Lord. Righteous anger, a heart for justice, by God's definition, is needed and it's lacking, I believe. But there's, there's a difference between righteous anger, holy anger and indignation, and anger that causes you to sin. Be angry and sin not. And I just want to exhort you and encourage you as I exhort and encourage myself Things that we will be seeing, I believe, I believe, I'm convinced, the things that we see in 2021 and maybe 2022 and beyond, what if it's worse than what we've already seen in 2020? And I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about unrighteousness, wickedness, vile things. I'm from Seattle. I've seen a lot. I've had an urgency and a burden for this message for years because I've seen what the enemy, Hasatan, not man, man plays their role. But let's look to the source. Principalities, rulers, fallen angels, yeah. demons, yes brother. I've seen what they would like to produce not just in this country, but across this world. And it is disgusting. It's wicked. It grieves you. you. You literally feel like Lot. And it's not just the homosexuality. All types of wickedness in the streets, in front of everyone. Lawlessness. Also, those that confess Yeshua, living as if there's no law. Go back to Matthew 25, verse 11. I want to speak to that. 
Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Lawlessness. Does that sound familiar? Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verse 13. The same wording is used. Matthew 7, verse 13. To honor the context, I went a little further ahead. I'm going to be doing a little more reading. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit, even if they hide it. God knows. He sees the fruit. Hypocrisy doesn't fake him out. A good tree cannot bear good fruit. Excuse me. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. There it is. Just like the foolish virgin said, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Notice they say we. Lord, have we Not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And so, what laws are being broken by these people that were gathering and amongst and even considered themselves part of the chosen of Yeshua. What were these laws? Let's turn to Matthew 22, verse 34. Matthew 22, lawlessness, verse 34. This is Yeshua teaching. Matthew 22, verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Yeshua said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On These two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lawlessness. 
breaking the commands of God. So let me, <laughs> lest you think, I have had seasons where I have begun, become unprepared, slowly but surely. It's rarely quick. It's a process. And we could be honest with ourselves when we're beginning to fall victim to that process of becoming unprepared virgins. And I found, it never failed, I could be very active in ministry, I could be doing plenty of things right, but, but the main thing, the most important thing, the greatest commandment, somehow would begin to take back, take a back seat, fade to the background of other laws or commands. And it still made me feel good because I could point to others and compare myself to other Yeshua followers and say, well, look at me. Look at them. I think I'm all right. I know I'm not on fire like I used to be, but I still love them. And the question is, what predicates, what gives the condition of the degree, how grotesque and wicked a sin is? The younger a child is, the more innocent they are, the more we are grieved and angered at wrongdoing and sin. I remember when I worked for the House of Representatives in Olympia, Washington, in the state capitol, and I first looked upon a very liberal politician's desk and saw a picture of him with a little boy, he and his husband, which we know he's not his husband. And I remember thinking, Why? What, what, what is this? Oh, yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah. One of my coworkers told me, yeah, homosexual couples can adopt children. This is years ago. I know that's normal now. We don't flinch at that. But there was a time where we would have tore our shirts possibly in disbelief because of what? Because of what? Because of the precious innocence of that child. God loves that child. That child doesn't know any better. It's being raised into that deceit and deception. Well, let's speak to the parable again, the bridegroom. Some of you have seen my wife. I believe she's very beautiful. I'm sure some of you agree. She's also very intelligent. She's an amazing mother. There's plenty of people that would consider her a trophy wife. I am so blessed. And you can imagine how you would feel if you found out with her I almost said slaving, <laughs> with her working as hard as she has to work unto the Lord by God's grace, and God graces her with six kids, nine and under, every day trying to homeschool and feed them and clean them and punish them and discipline them while I'm gone. Well, the more godly and amazing I would paint the picture of her, which she is, I think you would be more grieved or more upset or more angry with my conduct if you found out that I actually treated her like garbage. Lovelessness. Oh yeah, I had some love for her, but a lot of it, you know, waned away over the years because, you know, she, she, she really drops the ball in plenty of ways, but I don't. You know, I'm the man. Ooh, and I see some of the women are really starting to catch that vision of righteous anger. Yeah, you know, God's called me to lead, and so she stays in her place. But yeah, you know, she gets on my nerves, but you know, I, I fear God, so I stay with her, and I don't cheat on her. But. And treat her, treat her as such in the home. Can you imagine if you were able to catch a clip, a video of me treating my wife with lovelessness, disdain? What about Yeshua? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so I want to encourage you. Lawlessness is abounding. But what is the priority? What should our priority be when we are stirring up the fear of the Lord within our heart and we're positioning ourselves in a posture of waiting and preparation we want to make sure that we are keeping our hearts, guarding our hearts, that we're 
fellowshipping with other Yeshua followers that are loving the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. You may have other commonalities, other things that you have in common with with other Yeshua followers, but truth be told, if you're honest with yourself, you know, well, we have these things in common. Maybe it's even Sabbath keeping. Maybe it's even Torah and other things. But the question is, can you honestly and sincerely say this person obviously loves God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength? And when they fall short of that, it matters to them. The bar has not been lowered in their heart. They will not pretend or act as if there's no law. Lawlessness will abound. Hearts, the love of many will grow cold. Hearts will be hardened and there will be a great falling away. So I want to encourage you to guard your heart. Remember this parable. Remember the first step. The first step to be prepared is to be born again. Your heart cannot grow cold if it's already cold. Excuse me, your love. The love of many will grow cold. Your love cannot grow cold unless you. So if you have a cold heart already and you know it, and let's talk about the evidence of that. If you've never had a season where there's genuine affection and love for Abba, for Yeshua and the word and his truth. If you could be honest with yourself and say, that's me. Could you please call on him and say, give me a new heart. Save me. Don't, don't continue to try to conjure up the human ingenuity and strength and willpower to serve God in our midst. You need a new heart. I tried it for, some of you remember from Yom Kippur, I talked about that. I tried it for about a, a month and a half. I tried to clean myself up and I was going to please God and love God. And I failed miserably until I finally came to the end of myself, humbled myself in front of other people, actually, at the particular church I was at. And I repented with my whole heart. I turned to him with genuine faith that was going to produce works. And he saw that faith. He actually gave me the gift of that faith. And he responded. And he gave me a new heart and a new spirit. (laughs) And then the journey began of being transformed by the renewal of my mind. Then the journey began of being on that potter's will and the potter conforming and shaping me into the likeness of Yeshua. Amen. Lawlessness. Loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second indicator that your heart is already cold and it's never, you've never been given a new heart. Your love has grown cold hasn't grown cold, it actually already was cold because you've never had the agape, supernatural love of God shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach HaKadosh, is that you never, you you not only lacked love and warmth and affection for Abba, for his only begotten son, Yeshua, our King, our Savior, and for his word, but you also lacked warmth, affection, and love for the lost. The second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor? Yeshua answered that. So, (laughs) is a Biden supporter your neighbor? Righteous indignation. I'm all for it. Let's stay angry about what we're supposed to be angry about. And may it move us to not be hypocrites. May it move us to prayer. May it move us to proclaiming truth and calling a spade a spade. But in Yeshua, in Yeshua, brethren, brothers and sisters, if we fail to hide ourselves in Yeshua, if we fail to abide in him in this season, or you're beginning to drift from that place of strength and grace and help. I don't believe you'll be able to navigate, well, any season, but certainly the season to come. And so have you ever cared about the lost perishing? Let me, let me just say something. One of the things that grieved me as I grew in the Lord and spent more time with brothers and sisters in different denominations, there were some that I actually could tell that when I was wicked and arrogant with my cornrows and my rap music and my marijuana smoke and just wretched, 
many of them would have looked at me and been disgusted and not even thought about praying for me. Lovelessness. They would have complained to their spouse or their friend, oh, look at this clown, look at his pants. But they wouldn't have known that I grew up a pastor's son. They wouldn't have known that I was depressed. (laughs) They wouldn't have known that Abba had actually started drawing me. Lawlessness, commands, the great commission, the last commandment Yeshua gave before he ascended, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, which would mean as we're making those disciples, they'll become disciple makers. (laughs) We've gotten away from this. Let's be honest. Some of us, excuse me, at times. Certainly much of the professing uh, body of Yeshua in America. And so I just want to speak to uh, the call to be prepared for the second coming, the day of the Lord. it's 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 a terrible, a great and terrible, fearful time of judgment for some and it's salvation for others. And I want to read a couple of exhortations, uh, one from Peter and one from Paul to the people of God. And then I will finish. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Let us hear this. This, When they sent these, when they sent the papyrus skin, these scrolls to to the church, to the people of God, somebody would open it up and it would be read in their hearing. There's something to be said about hearing this large sections of it in its context instead of just picking parts. So I just want to read this. Bear with me. Finally then, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Yeshua that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Yeshua, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such." as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves. Time to stop. For you yourselves. Totally lost my place. Thank you. Verse 9. Somebody's falling. Praise God. But concerning brother love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, listen to the verb, urge, brethren, that you increase more and more. If you're not increasing, if Abba is not dressing your vine, pruning your branch, and you're not becoming more and more fruitful, chances are your leaves are slowly starting to wither and the fruit is starting to die on that branch. Abba's a good vine dresser. He knows how to prune our branches that we would abound more and more. You increase more and more that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack Nothing. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Yeshua. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with 
them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For the sake of time, I'm going to stop. Please read the rest of 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1, and then quickly 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will, will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. As also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Abba Father, we thank you. Thank you that you rescued us. You snatched us out of the pit of despair, the miry clay. You rescued us. It was a miracle. It's the greatest miracle. The salvation of your people. I was dead. I was dead in my trespasses and sins, and so were many of us under my voice. And you were gracious. You were patient. You were merciful. And you snatched us. You gave us the gift of faith. You sanctified us in Yeshua and began to sanctify us and conform us into his likeness. And there's, there is those that are perishing amongst us. Give us your heart for them. May we have anger, but not sin. And may we have righteous indignation that drives us into warfare against the enemy, in intercession, in prayer, and in proclaiming the word of God as our sword. And Abba, we love you so much. We want to love you more. We want to love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. May it be so according to us in this season, anyone that is no longer at their first works and before their first love, may there be a returning, revival. Oh God, there are some under my voice that have been fighting and scrapping. And I thank you for that, God, that there are some that were not comfortable in complacency and lovelessness and lawlessness, God, or a hardened heart. And God, we just ask that you'd meet them with your grace and your provision in Yeshua HaMashiach, that you would help them even now to be emboldened to speak to Rusty, to speak to David Schiller, to speak to Earl, to speak to Dan, to speak to one of the women of God, and open up and be honest about where they are, that they would be helped and edified and that we would not dishonor you and 
sell you short of what you, you deserve. You deserve all of our hearts and obedience. These things I pray and ask in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.